worship this morning. It's not that early anymore, so we can <laughs> come on. Uh, let's just let's just lift him up, Father. We thank you that the veil has been torn, God. I thank you that we have access directly before you in the throne room this morning, God. We thank you that you are on the move, Lord, all across America, all across America, Father. I thank you that you are stirring your spirit like a whirlwind, God. I thank you, Lord, for what you're doing. Come on, begin to thank him. You know, in the word it says, with thanksgiving, I will enter his courts with praise. So begin to put thanks on your lips this morning. Oh, we love you. We love you, Jesus. Oh, we thank you, God. We thank you for what you have taken us out of. We thank you for what you have brought us out of, Lord. We thank you that you have taken us from the depths of hell and you have seated us at the right hand of God. I thank you that we are heirs with Christ. I thank you that we're clothed with righteousness this morning. I thank you that every lie is being broken this morning. I thank you that you 
Is the highest your name?
was shed for you and for me. Oh, none can compare.
Hallelujah. God is good, amen. Glory to God. It's good to see you all. Blessing to worship together here this morning with you all. Thank you all for coming. We're going to be transitioning into uh, offering. And uh, I guess before we do that, maybe we can take a couple minutes and greet one another. Would you take a couple minutes, meet someone new, bless people around you. Good to see you all. Blessed to be here in the house of God. Amen. First, uh, I wanted to greet all those that are here for the first time. If you are here for the first time or maybe second time, I haven't had a chance to fill out a connection card. If you could raise your hand, we'd like to connect with you. There should be some cards either in front of you in your seat or um, if not, just keep your hands raised and we'll have some ushers uh, get you a card. I think I saw a hand right there. Welcome. I wanted to uh, share something that when I was praying this morning, God put on my heart to, uh, to focus and just share a few scriptures on, uh, on our hearts, my heart, your heart. Um, in Mark 12, we, we see there's a scripture talks about we meet a poor widow who gave two small coins in the temple treasury as her offering. In verse 42, it says, truly I say to you, this poor widow has put more, more than all those who contributed in the offering box, for they all contributed out of their abundance, but she out of poverty and has put everything she had, all she had to live on. This widow considered, was considered one of the greatest uh, givers in scripture. We know God wants, wants us to be cheerful givers, generous givers. So we should always give all we have. Is the, so, so sometimes people say, should we give everything we have? But that's um, the point here is the principle we learn is the widow is a condition of her heart was right. She knew Jesus was worthy of everything she had. She teaches us right attitude and motives for giving. She didn't give all she had out of obligation, but out of love, honor, and reverence. Also, uh, 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 9, verse 6 says, the person who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and the person who sows generously will reap generously. Each one of us, each one of you should give just as has decided in his heart, not reluctantly or under compulsion, but because God loves a cheerful giver. So verse, you know, there's a lot of scriptures that emphasize and tie sowing, giving to your hearts. And it's important that we examine ourselves and be a cheerful giver, uh, not of obligation. Um, and, you know, I just encourage you, this, this was something spoke to me, and I just wanted to remind us. I know we've all probably read this passage many, many times, but it seems like every time I read it, there's some new nugget that comes out of it. So let's pray. Jesus, thank you so much, Lord God, for this time, Lord God, we have together. Lord God, I pray for every person that gives and ties this morning, Lord, that you would bless each one of them, Lord God. I pray and ask, Lord God, that you help us always examine ourselves and always be that cheerful giver that, that you emphasize, Lord God, and always be willing, Lord God, to, to always be giving out of a cheerful heart, Lord. In your name we pray. Amen. We're going to be transitioning. If you can all look at the screen, we have a few uh, announcements. 
Good morning, Church of Truth. We are so happy to see you here today. If this is your first time, welcome. We are honored that you chose to spend your morning here with us. And if you haven't yet, please fill out the connection card that's located in the seat pocket in front of you. Fill it out, turn it into the coffee shop, and you'll receive a coffee on us. We're having a lot of excited things happening here in the next few months. So we just wanted to make sure that you know the dates and the times. So take out your phones, get your calendars out, and let's write some things down. First things first, Passover weekend is coming up and it's especially special for us because we get to come into remembrance of what Jesus did for us. Thursday, April 6th at 7 p.m., we are having a combined communion service. That following Friday and Saturday, we are hosting our annual Journey to the Cross event that we put on for all of our community. This event is a great opportunity to invite a family member, co-worker, neighbor. That Sunday, April 9th, is Resurrection Sunday at 11 a.m. Join us as we celebrate this joyous day. And lastly, at the end of April, we are having our annual G4T conference, which is April 27th through the 29th. We are so excited to see a generation rise up that follows the Lord, serves Him, and wholeheartedly truly is transformed by Him. Be sure to make it out to the services and see what God is doing in the younger generation. And with that, that's a wrap for all of our announcements. Now let's get back to service. Hallelujah. Before we continue, I want to share the a um, few Sundays ago, we start collecting funds for the chairs and we give you opportunity to purchase some chairs. Um, so we are good with that number, fully funded. Uh, praise God. So, but if you're still thinking and praying about it, go ahead. Continue to give. <laughs> you will not regret. Amen. Amen. You know, it was, it was interesting how it happened. We were sitting at pastor's house and, and he's sharing. He's like, the funds will come in. The full amount will come in. Um, we prayed and literally, what, half an hour later, we received a check that covered a, a thousand chairs by one man. So praise God. Praise God. So I want you guys to meet our the newest members. So if we can welcome the, the parents and the babies who brought their babies, we want to meet them and bless them. I know it's more. There should be more. Oh, there you go. Man, well, Emma, Emma, <laughs> this is Lila, Lila, awesome, awesome, you know, the, uh, even um, Joseph and Mary, they thought it was necessary to bring Jesus to the temple, but I want to read a scripture, and maybe it's, it's a, to the fathers and all the fathers that are sitting here, to all of us, just a reminder what actually brings the blessing in our life. This is what David says in one of his songs. Um, he starts like this, praise the Lord. Come on, say it with me. Praise the Lord. Yes. Blessed is the man who fears the Lord, who delights greatly in his commandments. His descendants will be mighty on earth, and the generation of the upright will be blessed. Health and riches will be in his house, and his righteousness endures forever. So there's a huge responsibility on the fathers and all of the fathers here. There's a big responsibility on us, man. For the future generation if we delight in the word of God if we delight in his presence this is the promise of God for the next generation that they will be mighty on earth that they will prosper the wealth will be there the health will be there and you know what 
There's a lot of prayers we will have to do if we delight in His presence. There's a lot of prayers. There's sometimes we miss out on certain things and then we run after the train. Trying to pray and plead God and say, God, please save my kids. But there's actually a promise. When we step into this promise, God said, I will take care of your kids. They will be healthy. They will be provided. They will be saved in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Can we all rise and, and bless those beautiful girls? If I can have pastors, please come up. Father God, we're so thankful that you are faithful. We're so thankful that we can come into your presence, that we can dwell in your presence. And your word says, blessed are those who dwell in the house of the Lord. And we're so thankful that this morning we, can, we get to testify those beautiful girls being devoted to you. And we pray right now that they will be saved, that they will be healthy, that they will step into their destiny. In Jesus' name, we speak your blessing over them. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And we thank you that you will keep them in your hand. That you will keep them full of your presence. We thank you, Jesus. And everybody said. And everybody said. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 No, no, no. You, you don't sit down. Don't sit down. Don't be to her. You guys can sit down. But... Or go to your spots. We have one more family that they're moving to Florida. That's Anatoly and Emma. If you guys are here, we want to pray. Bless you. Yes, they're here. Okay. We, we're going to pray and bless them for the safe uh, trip there. They're already packed and, and ready to go. But this is your home. You're always welcome. Even if you come in five years and ten years, feel free. This is your home. Amen. Can we bless them? So God will take care of them there and so can, they can find themselves there. So they can serve there. In Jesus' name. Father God, we're so thankful for this beautiful family. That they have been such a blessing for this local house, Father God. And we're so thankful that you use them in this local church father god and we we thank you for everything that you've done through them here and right now we pray for them that they will that they will continue to carry that blessing that you place in them father god that they will be faithful in the places that you will lead them in jesus name we pray right now that you will use them mightily in jesus name that your name will be praised through their life through their family in jesus name that everything that they will need you will provide for them that they will feel your blessing that they will walk in your blessing and they will be a blessing for many many people around them in jesus name we speak your blood and we plead your blood over this house, over this family, in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now you may be seated. Okay, are you ready for the word? Yes? Amen. Amen. Well, we have a privilege this morning and, or this day already uh, to have one of our dear friends. Uh, Pastor Andre all the way from Springfield, Massachusetts. He will be sharing the word. So if we can give a very, very warm welcome to Pastor Andre, please. Come on, Church of Truth. I love being in your church, love being around you, with you. I know a lot of people over the years, relationships build, a lot of familiar faces and uh, I'm always delighted to be in your house in your with your family here and so we had a rough night you know the weeping may endure through the night but the joy comes with the morning come on we're here and we're delighted and we're enjoying ourselves awesome I'm from Massachusetts our church called Breakthrough Worship Center we're doing similar things what you guys are doing, loving the Lord, ministering to Him, ministering to people. <sighs> yeah, life is great in the kingdom, when we truly live in the kingdom of God, where we understand that we are 
in the kingdom of God, uh, there's different laws, there's different principles, and life is great and rewarded. Amen. Let's open... Um, Second Corinthians. Actually, no, let's open to um, Psalm. I was battling what to speak on. Second Corinthians. Um, I'm sorry, not second. Uh, Psalm 27. Psalm 27, yeah. I want to talk about the topic, people of one thing. People of one thing. I do truly believe that God is raising a people. He's been raising a people. He always had people. He have, has people right now. And he will always have a generation. People of one thing. There's, we're going to talk about a few people in the Bible that are, that are very um, powerful or known. And we can learn from them. And we can see who they were and how they lived. I want to start from um, David. Before he was a king, he was just a shepherd. He was just a boy. And before he became a king, he was running away from the king. He was hiding in caves. And in those early years, he had a promise. He had a prayer that, that he sustained for the rest of his life. You know, sometimes we're good with praying right prayers. We, have a, we know how to do a right lingo. We know what to, good things to ask God for. And when life changes, things become better or, or worse. And we tend to forget the things we actually been praying for or asking God for or believing God for or committing, committing ourselves to. David is one of the men... One of the heroes in a scripture in the Bible that actually lived life with that commitment that he was praying in the beginning of his life. And we're going to read from Psalm 27 verse 4. It's when he's writing, if you read from verses 1 to 4, he's, he's actually writing this, uh, praying this when he's running from King Saul. And this is what he's saying, one thing I ask of the Lord. This thing I seek most. Let me read from NLT. One, um, from NLT. One thing I ask of the Lord, this only do I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, gaze on the beauty of the Lord, and seek Him in His temple. Or other translations say, um, delighting in the Lord's perfection and meditate on him in his temple. David, he's not a king yet. He's nobody. His life is running from the government, from the, from the army of the country. And he's having this prayer that is written in the Bible that he's praying, Lord, there's only one thing I want to be after. For the rest of my life. One thing I ask. And that one thing I will seek. For all the days of my life. I find myself. That we are. We're okay with asking. We can ask. We know the link. We can ask the right, the good stuff. But then there comes a point. Where are asking, what we're asking for, there must be a seeking after that asking. There's this famous statement or phrase that, that we say, the proof of the desire is in pursuit. Your proof or proof of your desire is in your pursuit. If there is no pursuit, honestly, there is no desire. 
If there's no pursuit towards that business that you wanting or you praying for, you believing for, if you're not pursuing anything, if you're not making any decisions, I am so sorry. It's just a good lingo that doesn't have any foundation, right? And sometimes we can find ourselves with the Lord. And the Lord loves prayers like this. Even sometimes when we think oh, this is not a real prayer, the Lord, He understands and He honors the prayers like this. Prayers that we want to pursue Him. Prayers that we want to fulfill the will of God on this earth. Prayers that we want to step into our destiny. We want to do what He wants us to do. When we, we don't even know what He wants me to do. But when I pray this, He loves it. And He will answer it. But David, he has a he took a, a, a step higher. That thing I will seek. What is this? What is that I'm asking for the rest of my life? And what is that I will always pursue for the rest of my life? Where is this one thing? Out of gazillion things, out of million things, what I can do. And he's talking about here, he's talking about that I want to be, I want to dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. What is he talking about? He's talking about the presence of God. David is committing himself for the rest of his life, all the days of his life. I don't think it really means every single day live in the house of God. What it, what it means is that in all seasons of my life, in all seasons, when things are doing up, when I'm doing good, when I'm in a valley, when I'm in the middle, when things are up, down, with, throughout the, all the seasons of my life, I want to pursue this one thing. He's committing himself for the rest of his life. So to be in the house of the Lord. One translation said to delight in the Lord's perfection. David tapped into the beauty of delighting in God. This is something that has not been put in words before David much. David was the one who actually tapped into this beauty of enjoying or delighting in God. It was before him, it was like a, a duty that you just have to do something for the Lord. But David tapped into the heart of God and he realized, he discovered that God can be enjoyed and must be enjoyed. He's talking about delighting in the Lord. Church, if, if this thing, Christianity or prayer, intimacy with God, loving God, if it's not enjoyable, it is not sustainable. Christianity meant to be delighting. It's meant to be enjoying. God is beautiful. We are the ones who are bored and boring. He is gorgeous. He's amazing. There is no one like him. And David tapped into it and said, I want to delight in your perfection and meditate upon you in your temple or seek you in your temple well the presence of God back then was only in a temple in fact when David became the king the first thing he's doing he is bringing the ark of the covenant where God was into Jerusalem because it was completely ignored the first statement David is saying becoming a king He's saying, now it is the time to bring back the Ark of the Covenant into Jerusalem because it was neglected. God was neglected during the days of Saul. In the previous leadership of the country, presence of God, this one thing was completely ignored. God was completely ignored. God was nowhere. He was in the in the country no one cared about Saul was a king for 40 years did not care about the presence of God David committing himself for the rest of his life and then he's saying in verse 5 for he will conceal me there when trouble comes he will hide me in his sanctuary listen church based on your 
understanding of end times, your eschatology. David is saying, not if trouble comes. He said, when they come. When trouble comes into my life, he, the one I'm pursuing, the one I'm, I'm, I'm laying my life for to know him, to enjoy him, to be with him, he will conceal me when the trouble comes. Listen, the only thing will protect you and conceal you when the trouble comes, it's, it is not your financial status. Things might get really hard. Things might get really bad. Finances would not be able, finances are not capable of concealing you at that level of troubles. What will conceal you in the level of troubles that are coming is this one thing that you're pursuing. It's himself. It's the spiritual riches, not financial, not wealth, not status. Those things will not conceal you. They're not going to help you. And David understands, I'm pursuing him because when the trouble comes, he'll conceal me. Well, first of all, he's saying, I'm pursuing him. I want to pursue him because he's beautiful. I want to enjoy him. He's satisfying. So when the trouble comes, he's going to conceal me in his sanctuary. He will place me out of reach on a high rock. Nobody will touch you. Nobody will be able to reach to you. Nobody will be able to harm you. That riches, that knowledge of God, that understanding, this revelation that you're going to be getting, downloading throughout the years, throughout these commitments, these revelations, this spiritual knowledge and riches and understandings, this maturity will actually sustain you in the years and times of trouble. Amen. On the high rock, verse 6. Then I will hold my head high above my enemies who surround me. At his sanctuary, I will offer sacrifices, shouts of joy, singing praises to the Lord. And when David became the king, he... The dream of all the dreams, king of all Israel... The first thing he's doing, he's accomplishing this prayer he prayed early years, in his early years. He's bringing back the Ark of the Covenant into Jerusalem. And he's funding musicians and singers. And he's pursuing after God for the rest of his life. That is why I believe Jesus is forever will be called the son of David. For all eternity, we're going to spend with Jesus. He will always be the son of David. Because there was a man who laid his life. He tapped into the New Testament. And he put the Ark of the Covenant in a tent. Where the priests or the high priest no longer required to, to be. Because in the old system, only high priests could enter behind the veil to be with God. David took that system out. Well, it was still there at the same time. David is bringing the Ark of the Covenant and put a tent over it where the high priest no longer needed anyone who wanted to come to be with God, to pray, to sing, to be with Him, could come 24-7. At the same time, in another town where people would come with animals and kill animals and priests, and all the sacrifices was happening. At the same time, two different temples. Well, there was a temple. Not temple, tabernacle. And then there was a, this tent where God was. Behind that veil, there was no ark. David tapped into the New Testament. This is what you and I have right now. We don't need a high priest. 
We don't need a, a middle man to come before, before the Lord. I'm telling you, church, this one thing is what we need to be after. Is be with Him, know Him, dwell with God, enjoy God, delight, meditate on the Lord. And He will conceal you when the trouble comes. We think... We think what we had in the previous years, it was hard. We, might, we just might just have no idea what may come to all of us. And people who know God will stand and do great things. Amen. Let's look from, um, read a scripture in uh, Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 10. Another famous scripture that we know. I just want to remind all of us. This is what I remind myself to constantly. Luke chapter 10 verse 38. As Jesus and his disciples continued on their way to Jerusalem... They came to a certain village, and a woman named Martha welcomed him into the house. Her sister Mary sat at the Lord's feet, listening what he thought. But Martha was distracted by the big dinner she was preparing. She said to, to, G, to Jesus, Lord, doesn't it seem unfair to you that I, that my sister just sits here? Well, I do all the work. Tell her to come and help me. But the Lord said to her, my dear Martha, you are worried and upset over all these details. But there is only one thing worth being concerned about. Mary has discovered it. And it will never be taken away from her. In NLT, it says, I'm sorry, in New King James, it says, But one thing is needed, and Mary has chosen that good part that will never be taken away from her. <clears throat> the scripture marks me, it always convicts me. Jesus is traveling. He comes to this house with his disciples. And this, this girl sitting with the, the boys, with the men, and hearing his teachings. And the other sister is, you know, she's upset. He's nervous. Makes sense, obviously. And she approaches him with a rebuke. She approaches the Lord and saying, doesn't it, doesn't it seem fair I do all the work? And she ju just sits here. I think we might have an issue in the body of Christ right here. That we... We shift focuses. We shift perspectives. We stop enjoying and delighting... When we sit before the Lord with our open Bibles and we're dwelling, feasting on the words with red. This girl is just re sitting at Jesus' feet and drinking every single word, taking every word, every revelation, every thought that he's speaking to her, to them. She's just right there. And Jesus is doing, he's actually doing a teaching right now. He's teaching us right now from this place. He's not just teaching Martha. He's actually teaching all of us right now. Listen, this is not a phrase of your favorite writer, C.S. Lewis or whatever you read, whatever the, the smart or, or, you know, all those awesome or whatever guys out there that say good, strong statements. 
Listen, this is the statement of the Lord. Jesus himself is writing, it's saying a phrase, a statement that we're all out to. Pray that we would see it and understand it at least a little bit of importance of this statement. Martha was distracted. And then she is saying, Jesus is saying, but one thing is needed. What was she distracted from? She was distracted from this one thing. That Jesus said that one thing is needed. And Mary has discovered it or she chose that. Church, your pastor will not be able to do this for you. I will not be able to do this for you. This is a personal choice. This is a personal, it's your choice. You must discover it and choose this to be the most important thing of your entire life. What is it? Not to be distracted from this one thing. Sitting at Jesus' feet and hearing what he has to say to you. And Jesus is saying this is what actually needed. This is that one thing that is needed. And then he's finishing something. He's saying something. Then this one thing from Mary, it will never be taken away from her. This lifestyle, this posture of your heart, pursuing God, hearing God's words, being with him, praying, communicating with him, fellowshipping with him, sitting before the Lord. In eternity, in an age to come, this will work for you. This would be a benefit to you for the rest of eternity, not just here. For the rest of eternity, when your eyes would lock with Jesus' eyes, he will remember like this every little thing, every hour, every minute, every thought, every adoration that you, that you did to him by prioritizing. When a person that you really look up to, a famous man, famous per per person, and you did something to him. And years la 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 later, he, he would, you know, recognize it publicly. That feels great. That feels great. Can you imagine in all the eternity, anytime you're going to look at Jesus in what, whatever prox proximity you're going to be with him, based again on your understanding of heaven. You're going to live in Jerusalem or you're not going to live in Jerusalem. But in any proximity you're going to be with him, when he sees you, he'll remember every single thing. You know, we remember only highlights. We only remember big things. He will remember every little thing when you said yes to him to this one thing this will never be taken away from you it will always be on your resume always be on your case you know why you know why this is so precious precious to 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 him that we do this on this earth this is the only time that, that we have is on this earth that will affect eternity in this way because we have resistance. In eternity, there will, no be, there will not be resistance anymore. Yes, we will be spending time with God. We will be fascinated by Him. We will be worshiping, praying, loving, enjoying God that we have no idea how. Because we're going to see Him as He is. Right? But, but, we're going to be evaluated by what we did during the time on this earth. Did you prioritize time? Did you prioritize this one thing in your life? This will affect all your eternity. This will never be out of your case. Because of resistance. You could, this morning, all of us could be somewhere else. We choose to come and sit at Jesus' feet. And that is precious. 
and he will never forget that. Well, maybe some of us came because we just hadn't, didn't know what to do. We just kind of, you know, we, we might not come here to be with him. We just come here because this is the right religious thing that we, that we do. And that is great. That is awesome. But when we prioritize, will never be taken away from us in eternity. Because of resistance. It's going to mark him every single time. In 1 Corinthians 1.9, it says that God is faithful who has called you into fellowship with his son, Jesus Christ. He has called you in, in Mark 3.13, it says Jesus called, went on a mountain and called to him who he wanted it. So that they would be with him. That they would be with him. And then he gave them power, authority, and sent them out to preach the gospel. And cast out devils. Have you been with him? Have we been with him? Are we with him? I have another one thing that is needed. It's in Philippians. Philippians chapter 3. We're going to read from, learn from Apostle Paul. Philippians chapter 3. So Jesus was a man of one thing. Mary and Jesus established this, that this is the one thing that's needed. And then let's read from Paul. Verse 7. In early chapter, chapter he's describing, you know, what he has, his accomplishment and how, what he achieved in life. But, what thi but that things were gained to me, these I have counted, counted loss for Christ. Yet, indeed, I also count all things loss for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord. For whom I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish or garbage. That I may gain Christ. And be found in him. What a, what a statement. I, I'm losing everything that I gain. Everything, my achievements. I, I take it. I consider it as garbage. I don't need it. I don't want it. So I may gain Christ and be found in him. What does it mean, be found in him? That was his chase. He's actually in this chapter, Apostle Paul, he's pretty much describing his entire goal. He's, he's pretty much putting all who he is and what his energy goes to. What is he all about is pretty much right here. Apostle Paul, who read more than half of the New Testament. His teachings and revelations, mind-blowing. Here is pretty much he's saying what he's all about. Not having my own righteousness, which is from the law, but through Christ, through faith in Christ, righteousness, which from God by faith, that I may know him. I do all of these things. I forget all of these things. I throw these things away so I can know him. And the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being conformed to his death. If by any means I may attain the resurrection of the dead, not that I have already obtained, here church, not that I have already obtained or I'm already perfected, but I press on that I may lay hold of what for which Christ Jesus had, has also laid hold of me, brethren and sisters. I do not consider myself to have apprehended. I don't consider that I got it. 
I don't consider that I'm already there. But one thing I do, we see this again. But one thing I do, forgetting these things that's behind and reaching towards the things that I had. Pretty much what, what he's saying. But one thing I do, and then verse 14, I press towards a goal of the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Wow. But one thing I do, I press towards, next verse, for the high price of the upward call. What is this upward call? What is this upward call of God? In Christ Jesus. He's forgetting everything. Things he achieved. And he thinks that he know about God. He's like, but one thing I'm actually after is the, is the, is the high price or high reward or high status in eternity. Of the upward call of God. Who's the tallest man in this, in this room here? Rod? Come on up. Is that you? Can you? You got this. Come on, Rod. Thank you. You know, the Bible says, and there were giants in the land. We love Rod. Talking about this upper call of God. Christianity there's, has a symbol or icon, whatever. It's, it's a cross, right? Cross is what... Cross has... Can you make it, a, can you make it as a cross? C cross has two beams, right? It's the vertical beam and has a horizontal beam. That speaks of two great first commandments. is loving the Lord with all your heart. That's, that's the horizontal, uh, vertical beam, right? And loving your neighbor is this beam. Second commandment, love your neighbor as yourself. In all of this, it's pretty much everything, right? But Paul is saying there's a price. I'm after the price of an upward call of God. Upward call of God is the, is, the, is, the, is, the, is the call that we were called into fellowship with Jesus. We're called to know Him intimately, personally. We're called to, to, to worship Him. To be with Him. To adore Him. Ministering to the Lord's heart. Impact Him. This is the upward call of God. This is the first commandment. Love the Lord with all your heart. With all your soul. With all your strength. Second. Is loving your neighbor. Is your impact. That comes after, after this commitment after this lifestyle hear me as much as we love this as we love as we love impact salvations god loves it all of his people all these people are his he's the first one want them to be saved and to know him and to be in eternity with him he's the first one wanting this more than all of us combined together these are all his people suffering As much as we love this beam and we want to grow things in our lives, this beam fully, fully depends on this beam. Say amen. This beam is not going to be 
the beam that God wants you to have in your life. If this beam is struggling in your life, it's fully supported and you're knowing him, knowing his will, knowing his heart, knowing his purpose on this earth, knowing his plan on this earth, knowing his plan for your life, your assignment. It's fully, this is fully connected to this. And Paul is saying, I lay my life I forget everything for the price of the upward call of God. There is a price, and that is the highest price that we're going to get. In eternity, from the Lord himself, is the price for us knowing, growing in relationship with him. There will be a price for our obedience There is a prize from the Lord in our eternity for our obedience, for our assignment, that we're saying yes to him. But this is only coming out of knowing him. And we're saying yes with love. Upward call of God. How often we neglect that. Thank you, Rod. Let's all stand. Let's all stand, church. In other translation, I press towards a goal to win the supreme and heavenly prize of which God in Christ Jesus is called us upward. Has called us upward. You were called to build this strong beam for the rest of your life. And I guarantee you, when you give yourself to this, as David did, as Mary did, as Paul did, and many, 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 many other people in God's kingdom and giving themselves to this thing they prioritize this and they accomplish many great things and I'm not there's actually something very important and after that prize for the upward call of God verse 15 therefore let us as many as mature have this mind church hear me let us as many as mature or other churches said, those who are fully mature should have this way of thinking. And in anything, if this is otherwise, God will reveal even these things to you. Nevertheless, to the, to the degree that we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule. Let us be in the same mind. Brethren, join in join in following my example and know those who are walk as you have as a, a pattern as for a pattern Paul pretty much is saying I'm doing this so well just look at me and begin to copy my lifestyle he's so confident that my lifestyle and this one thing that I'm doing I'm forgetting and I'm pursuing the upward call of God. I want to know Him. I want to be found in Him. He's so confident that this is the will of God for Him. And He's saying, He's so confident. He's saying, look at me and do the same thing. This is... This is life of one thing. It's the mature life. Life of one thing in Christianity. It is a mature life. 
Jesus comes to this one church in book of Revelation that I have you've done great things but I have this one thing against you you have fallen from the height you have fallen from the height and that height was the love that you had and as we look at different people ourselves and new believers that experiencing the love of God the, 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 the encounters of God and we tend to we tend to look at these things that you know we'll see it's not that big of a deal it's not mature yet and obviously we understand all of these things but we should never graduate from this the church of Jesus Christ we should never graduate from knowing him from pursuing the knowledge of God from pursuing intimacy with the Lord from pursuing sitting with him with our Bibles open daily feasting on the Lord hearing what he has to say church this will conceal you when the trouble comes in your life this very thing will actually help you like nothing else is your spiritual storage, spiritual knowledge, spiritual understanding, spiritual maturity is what going to sustain you. Whatever comes in your personal life. And you need to choose this as Mary did. You need to choose this for yourself. I'm going to be a man after this one thing. I will be in the presence of God. I will be delighting in the Lord perfection. I will be seeking His presence. In Chronicles, Second Chronicles, verse 4, I believe, there's powerful scripture that we also know. So I'm going to read really quick. It's one verse. We're going to pray. We're already praying. Shut up, rest Thank you, Jesus. And Second Chronicle, verse seven, chapter seven, verse four, verse fourteen. Then, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, that's number one. Humble themselves. Humble themselves. Not when situation humbles you. Not when your wife humbles you. Not when things humbles you. You have to humble. But when people understand. And they will begin to humble themselves. That's number one. Number two, and pray. Number three, and seek my face. What is that? Or I understand humble myself. I can fast. And you know, have people go ahead and things like that. We understand that. I understand pray, shakaba, satarama, intercession, all of that. I understand that. I get it. I can sing. Seek my face. What is that? Is this a prayer? Is this worship? Is this I'm on my face? What does it look like? What is seeking my face is? Do we know this lifestyle? Do we have this lifestyle? They will seek my face, number three. And turn from their wicked ways, number four. And I will hear from heaven and forgive their sins and restore the land. My point of this is that there's prayers and they're seeking Him. And the Lord wants us to pray, to seek Him not pray for the sake of prayer and do a check mark i prayed have you seen him have you heard him have you silenced yourself to the degree that you have heard the lord speaking to you or you just prayed and you did a check mark and you satisfied you came to church have you seen him have you seen the beauty of jesus have you found in him do you know Him? Church, the Lord is inviting us this morning to a seeking of His face. 
not just asking one thing I ask David is saying but one that one thing I ask I actually seek after I want to encourage you if you have slipped away from your prayer schedule daily every other day mornings evenings I want to encourage you make this as a priority in your life is it three times a week that you give hour a day hour two hours three hours is it is it four times a week is it five is it every day 30 minutes I want to encourage you church make this the one thing you're after think of, of this as the highest thing of all other things that you can ever do the hour with him it is more than that thousand dollar check trust me it is more for eternity and not only eternity it is more here we have this statement that we all know I think prayer does not take time prayer saves time prayer saves time There's so many things the Lord saved me from when I would give extended hours to be with him and throughout those extended hours to be with him he began to tap on my heart and the things that I've been lusting after I wanted to buy that thing and just because I was in the presence of the Lord he gave me understanding he opened my eyes to see he saved me thousands of thousands of dollars I'm so grateful for him. prayer will save time for you save money for you will save energy will save many many things if you we will begin continue living this lifestyle of this one thing pursuing intimacy with the Lord hearing what has to say and obey if this speaks to you if the Lord speaks to you if these words resonate in your heart I want all of us to listen to the word of Jesus this one thing is needed and this will never be taken away from us why don't we just talk to the Lord right now all together as a church we can worship we can sing something but church I ask you take this before the Lord and say Lord I'm coming back I'm running back I want to pray I want to humble myself I want to seek your face and I will turn away from the wicked ways and I want you to heal my land Listen, I have this word right now. I feel it. There's a land. That, that, there's your land that the Lord gave you. And that land is sick. And the Lord wants to heal that land. Your land. Your family. He wants to heal things in your land that He has placed you in to steward. Begin to seek His face. Humble yourself. Pray. And He will heal your land. In Jesus' mighty name. Father, we thank you for this time. Holy Spirit, we thank you for your word. We thank you, Holy Spirit. Yeah. Jesus, you're beautiful. Jesus, you're beautiful. You're worthy. We give ourselves to you this morning, this afternoon. We give ourselves to you this afternoon, Lord. Listen, if you forget, when was the last time you actually been with Him? Tell Him, Jesus, I'm coming back. I'm coming back to the secret place. I'm coming back to be with you. I'm coming back. And not just coming back for, I'm making this a thing of my life. I'm making this a main thing, the most important thing of my entire life. To know you. Yeah, let's sing all this together. You're beautiful. You're beautiful, Jesus. You're beautiful, Jesus. You're beautiful, Jesus. We're saying yes. We're saying yes.
Holy Spirit, would you come and fall on your people? Would you visit and invite us? You've been inviting us, calling us to be with you, to be with you, to be with you, to be with you. We're saying yes, and we are the people of this one thing. People that would be in your presence. People that would be in your word. People that will be pursuing the upward call of God. We'll be pursuing relationship with you, intimacy with you, fellowship with you for the rest of our lives. And we believe and we know that you will conceal us in your sanctuary. You promise that we will be concealed by you. You will place us on a high rock and no one will reach us. Come on, open your heart. Cry out to the Lord. We're hungry for you, Jesus. We're hungry to know you. We need to know you. We must have you, Jesus. We must see your face. We must experience you. We must know you as a generation.
Masan tera baba baka tera tera bakiri baba baka tera bara bakiri baba baka tera masan tera ba kera masan tera bashiri baba baka tera masan tera bakiri baba baka tera masan tera ba ri bakiri baba baka tera masan tera bakiri baba baka tera ba Lord we thank you we thank you Lord for your presence in this place we thank you. ourselves, Lord.
Let's join hands with those that are next to us. We're going to pray a prayer of agreement. Lord, we stand before you. We thank you so much for one another. We thank you so much. We come in agreement right now, and the word of God says where two or three agree, Lord, you are there among us. And we come in agreement right now as a church that we got one to have this same understanding, to have this one thing that we ask and that we seek, to be those that are mature, that think this way. God, we pray for one another right now. If this area in our life, God, has not been right, if we have not been asking and seeking you, God, and desiring to know you more, if we have been distracted by many other things, forgive us, Lord. We pray for our neighbor right now. We bless each other right now in Jesus' mighty name. God, that we would grow, that we would grow in maturity, that we would grow in you in Jesus' mighty name. We stand in intercession for each one here right now in Jesus' name. God, that our hearts would not be hard, that we would not turn, God, towards the wrong direction, that we would not be distracted, but, God, that we would humble ourselves, that we, God, would grow in you more, that we would come to know who you are in a greater way in our life, that we would desire you more than anything else, that we would seek you more than anything else, that we would want you more than anything else, that David's prayer would be our prayer to dwell in your house all the days of our life, this one thing is what we ask and this one thing is what we seek we bless our families we bless our homes in jesus mighty name we bless our personal lives god that in our personal life this would be the way that we would live this would be the way that we would live in jesus mighty name we thank you jesus we thank you jesus as the church, as your body, we humble ourselves, Lord. We ask you, we seek you, we turn from our wicked ways, and we thank you, Lord. We thank you for the benefit that follows, that you hear us from heaven, that you answer us, God, and that you heal. As Andre prayed, Lord, I also pray, bring your healing into our life, bring your healing into our homes bring your healing into our families bring your healing into the land that you have given to us we pray this in jesus mighty name you are able god you are able to make a river flow where there is a desert place you are able to bring breakthrough and able to sustain and able to flourish every area that has god that has become dead there where there are bones god let them begin to live in jesus mighty name there where there is a drought god let that land be showered right now with your rain in jesus mighty name where we have not given room to the holy spirit holy spirit take over in those areas in jesus mighty name where we have not given room to your word let your word come into those areas in jesus mighty name we thank you for dry bones to begin to live we thank you for desert places to begin to grow we thank you that we would be planted like trees next to your river in jesus mighty name begin to receive this right now begin to receive this right now the lord will plant you like a river the lord will send his rain upon you the lord will bless you make his face shine upon you in jesus mighty name in jesus mighty name Come on, lift your voice right now in prayer. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. 
Holy Spirit, we thank you. Holy Spirit, we thank you. Holy Spirit, we thank you. Fill your church, Holy Spirit. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you so much, Lord. Holy Spirit, we thank you for what you are doing in our church, what you are doing, God, amongst us. We thank you so much. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for your work among us. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for your precious leading in our life. We thank you. We thank you. We bless, Lord, one another. We bless our families, our marriages, our children, everything that you've given to us, God, everything that you've entrusted us with. We thank you so much, Lord. We desire, we desire, Lord, we desire you. We desire to know you, and we thank you for what you're doing, that we would leave this place, Lord, choosing, choosing this one thing in Jesus' mighty name. Let this week, God, be a changing week for someone here, someone who is tired and weak, someone who has been going around the same thing over and over again, dealing with the same issues, going through the same problems, going around the same cycles. God, break, break this in their life in Jesus' mighty name. Let God them walk out of this place today with a different desire, a different outlook, a different vision, a different mindset. I thank you so much. I thank you so much, God, for what you have prepared for each one of us. And we bless each other in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Come on, give God a mighty, mighty shout. We thank you, Lord.